Well, the, what's next for me in my studio, there's two different types of uh, style art that's here. There's the geometric centric. For example, there's the pyramids. There's the cubes. These are geometric centric. The spheres are geometric centric. Geometric centric. They're centered about, around geometry. But what I've been able to do is I've been able to design a lathe where I can uh, create these lathe shapes. So I can create beautiful eggs, uh, just beautiful wine bottles. But what I want to do is I want to combine the geometric centric work and the lathe work in one piece. So that's going to be a real design challenge. I'm playing around with it. Uh, and I think uh, within the next year and a half, I'll have a, a new, fresh body of work that uh, is doing something that no one else has even thought of. My inspiration comes from nature. Uh, my inspiration comes from the, um, from the golden ratio that you see everywhere in nature. Uh, it's uniform. Uh, so the golden ratio is a pattern that you see everywhere in nature. And what I try to do is I try to emulate that pattern through uh, the measurements and the cuts and the shape and the design. So if I pull those ratios and I pull those, that scale from nature, it should have a more natural view to it because there's no such thing as a straight line in nature and I have to rely on a straight line all the time. So to make it more of a natural thing, make it more of a creation instead of a manufactured item, I use those golden ratio scale in there to make it more natural. So when people see it, they have more of a chance to connect with it rather than look at it and think that someone pushed a button and it spit it out at the end. Well, because of this golden ratio, the pieces have a sense that they are created and not manufactured. If I get away from that golden ratio, they look like they're manufactured and not necessarily created. And for me as an artist, there's a, there's a difference. You know, I, I, I'm a creator, I'm not a manufacturer. Right? So I like to have things, uh, my aesthetic is to look like they were created by the human hand. As precise as they are, as, 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 um, as, as tight as they are, uh, I, I still want that sense that they are created and not manufactured. And my, and my avenue to do that is the golden ratio. It's inside and outside and I, I try to put it everywhere in the world. Well, the message that I try to send to, uh, through my work is um, I leave it to the client. I leave it to the person who's going to go home uh, because they're the ones that give that artwork meaning. So I think, it's, I think it's arrogant for some artist to tell you what the artwork means because if they have to tell you what the artwork means, the artwork is probably not itself telling you what it means, right? And so what I try to do is when I sit down and when I create a piece, every single piece I work on, I just try to make it the most beautiful piece of art I've ever done before. So every single time I create a piece of work, I try to make it the most beautiful piece of work I've ever created. So that way, when someone has a, um, uh, an anniversary or their birthday or they're celebrating an occasion, or they have a, a personal meaning, they can attach it to this, 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 uh, this artwork that's full of beauty and it'll mean something to them. That's where, I get my, uh, that's where I get my drive and my ambition because if I can achieve that goal and make this artwork mean something to the clientele, to the people that are gonna go home with it, my patrons, the people that support my work, that's when, I've, that's when I, in, in my heart, I, I feel success. How do I judge success for a piece? Uh, well, there's two metrics. 
Uh, the first metric is, is it commercially viable? So do people like it? Do people buy it? Do people pay for it? That's the first metric because that keeps the lights on. And if you lose track of your clientele and what their taste is, you'll quickly run out of business. You'll, you'll, you, there, there won't be any more business. And then there's the artwork that really makes me excited, right? The, 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 the stuff that I like. And, uh, and, and that collection, that body of work, I, I pretty much keep to myself. I, I just, uh, I have my own little collection of, of shapes and designs that uh, I think are only suited for me. I keep those private. The trick is to, um, is to do both. The trick is to make something that you can be proud of that is a piece of art and, and still find someone that will trade for it, right? To, to, to monetize it. So that's the trick because I don't want to give anyone the sense that you just want to become a, um, a, 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 an art factory and do what this guy wants and do what this guy wants and do what this guy wants. There's a, there's a desire for art that, that speaks to a lot of people and that's a huge space to fill. So if you use your imagination, you can come up with your own artwork that still speaks to those people. And it is a challenge, and it is, a, uh, it is something that you have to, to work at, and, you, and, and it's a skill that you have to hone. But once you hone it, you've got a profession, and you've also got, uh, 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 you've also got the fulfillment of creating art, real art, that someone really wants to wants you to create so that's the that's the that's the place you want to be in in my opinion that's a happy middle yeah remember where for the oop oop